I just wanted to have a little bit of a brief video discussing powder cleansers. They're a little bit of an underrated category, but I'm actually not talking about the kind that's exfoliating. The more well-known powder cleansers like the Dermalogica, they usually contain some sort of enzyme or even some sort of physical exfoliant or particle in there to make them more of an exfoliating cleanser. The ones that I've become a fan of are actually gentle daily cleansers, so they don't have exfoliating properties. Powder cleansers don't need to automatically be exfoliating, that's just the way they happen to have been designed and the way their sort of reputation has developed. My favourite powder cleansers are non-abrasive, so they have absolutely no exfoliating action, they just operate the way any other cleanser or any other like regular cleanser would. To me, and one of the reasons why I really enjoy them is that powder cleansers tend to have this sort of cloud-like texture, so they're just really soft and like delicate and gentle and they just make my skin feel really great and cared for. Powder cleansers are super lightweight, of course, because they are just a powder. So they're great for travel and taking to the gym, in the car, you know, really wherever. And the nice thing is the texture can be customized depending on the quantity of powder to water. So that ratio is influenced by how you want to use it. So you can make it feel a little bit richer, a little bit lighter, just influencing one of those two things. So either the amount of powder or amount of water. And because I'm a fan of Gotham Easter, she's always talked about this kind of skincare theater. And I really enjoy the kind of sensorial textural shift that occurs with powder cleansers. Because it does start off as a powder, you add the water, it becomes this sort of creamy microfoam. As you kind of work it into the skin, it almost feels like a gel and then rinses away entirely cleanly. Because they're also quite gentle, you can leave them on the skin for a while. And to me, they work really effectively as a single cleanse because of that. I'm not like rushing to rinse my skin. It doesn't dry out my skin. So they just kind of tick all the boxes. I usually like the feeling of gel cleansers in the way that they leave my skin feeling quite clean and refreshed. And I still get that sensation with these powder cleansers, but because they're more gentle, they don't feel like they're kind of stripping my skin, which as far as gel cleansers has come in terms of their technology and balance, they're still the most like aggressive cleanser on the market, at least in my opinion. So the, this type of powder cleanser is a great balance between a cream and a gel, and it kind of bridges that gap and takes the benefits of those products, putting them into one format. Now, my favorite cleanser in this category, and again, if you followed me for any length of time, you'll already know, but it's the Build Skincare Bee Wash. This was revolutionary in my mind. Um, when I first heard of Build, just sort of on Instagram, um, they are a small indie brand from Canada. I was hesitant to buy this cleanser or even like engage with the brand because I was like, why would I want to use a powder cleanser when like Dermalogica, Touch or all these brands have a million options to pick from? I guess I hadn't really heard of a non-exfoliating powder cleanser, so it's a bit of a confusing concept in my head. To be honest, I was like, there's no way this is not going to be aggressive or abrasive on the skin. Then I got it in my hands and it was mind blowing. It was revolutionary in my routine. And I truly, truly think Build Be Wash is a standout skincare product. I'm like just so impressed that Jonah from Build has been able to come up with something simple and unique in a crowded market. Like I don't understand why this hasn't, like why it's not such a prevalent type of cleanser. So to reiterate, Bee Wash is non-abrasive, definitely no exfoliating properties in it. And it's also fragrance free. So if you do kind of prefer products that don't contain a perfume component, Build is definitely along the lines of like a drugstore brand, like a CeraVe or a La Roche-Posay or a Van, very much in that pocket. And the nice thing is that Bee Wash also contains Sorbitol. So Sorbitol is a humectant ingredient. It also has prebiotic properties. So this further improves the kind of hydrating barrier care properties of bee wash and also just makes it like a high tolerance cleanser one other thing that i really appreciate is that bee wash is an entirely original formula so build and jonah from build He's the chemist that is also the brand owner. So these products are all designed from scratch. They're not using like pre-made formulas or like private labeling products. Everything is original. Everything is small batch made in Canada, an indie brand that I really, really hope rises up to become a very well-known and widely popular brand. 
So yes, if it's not clear, I highly, highly, highly recommend Be Wash to like everybody. It is one of my all-time favorite skincare products, and I use a lot of skincare at all price points, but Be Wash and Build as a brand is like top tier, top, top tier, with the most elegant, the most well-designed products like ever. <laughs> Now, I know Bee Wash can be a little bit hard to source. The brand currently only ships to Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the United States. But there is another similar product on the market that actually has a very similar cleansing experience to Bee Wash. The alternative cleanser that I also love using and I keep in my routine very regularly, surprisingly, comes from Chanel. They have a powder to foam cleanser in their number one de Chanel collection. I love Chanel skincare and I actually think they're one of the most like underrated skincare brands. Obviously, Chanel as a brand is not underrated, but I just think their skincare offering is particularly excellent and very regularly overlooked. The Chanel cleanser and Bee Wash are quite similar. It's just that the Chanel option has a Chanel fragrance, and it's that kind of signature white floral scent that a lot of their products have. It is a quite like front and center fragrance experience, so it's not mild, you know, it is an obvious fragrance. So if you are planning on trying this product, maybe just go to one of the Chanel counters or their beauty stores just to ensure that you'll enjoy the scent that's included. This cleanser also has a few signature Chanel ingredients kind of scattered in. One of those key ingredients is their red camellia. That's a very Chanel coated extract. And I assume it's there to add a little bit of an antioxidant kick. If you're able to get Bee Wash, that's probably going to be the more universal option just because it's a little bit more affordable. I think there's more volume in the bottle as well. Um, but if Bill doesn't ship to you or you do like a fragrance experience, that's where the Chanel one really excels because they're just going to be more widely available. I've tried to compare these cleansers and I find it incredibly difficult to tell them apart. Sometimes I wonder if actually someone from Chanel stumbled upon Bee Wash and kind of emulated that cleanser because they're actually quite similar, but Bee Wash did come first. And just to touch on how I use these cleansers, I like to start with wet hands. I'll then apply a few shakes of the powder in my palms and I'll usually add just a few drops of water to kind of activate the cleanse or begin like the transformation process. The texture in my opinion should be fairly loose. I, I think sometimes when people get into powder cleansers they maybe don't add enough water so it feels very pasty. There should still be some like body to the texture and you don't want it too runny where it falls out of your hands but it also shouldn't be too much like a paste where there's no movement when you're using it. It might take a couple of tries until you get the balance of powder to water the way that you like it, and there is no rule. So if you do prefer it more paste-like, live your best life, that's of course totally fine. Um, I just think from a maneuverability perspective, having a texture somewhere between a paste and something fluid tends to work best. But as I said, there are no rules, so the texture, the way that you like to use it, will be entirely up to you. Um, and that's actually one of the benefits of a powder cleanser, is that you can influence the texture very easily. Before I close out this video, because some of you might have been expecting me to discuss more exfoliating cleansers, I have used the Dermalogica and Toucher ones. The Dermalogica ones to me are a little bit too aggressive, so I'm not able to use them daily. They have released their Milk Foliant more recently, which I haven't tried, but I assume that one will be more gentle. The Toucher ones are quite pleasant, just maybe a little bit pricey. I don't really need to use that type of cleanser regularly, um, but the one I do enjoy is from a more Pacific. This is described as having an enzyme exfoliating effect, but I find it exceptionally gentle, so I don't know how like active the enzymes are in this cleanser. This one I could comfortably use daily with no issue, and I happen to really love the scent of the Amore Pacific as well. If you have any other non-exfoliating powder cleanser recommendations, I'd love to hear. I really haven't been able to find that many on the market. Nearly all of them have some type of exfoliating property, um, but this video and this category is really more about gentle daily cleansers in a powder format. That's it for this video, just a bit of an introduction to non-exfoliating powder cleansers. Let me know if you've tried Bee Wash or if you're interested to try Build or the Chanel cleanser. I'll see you in the next video and please don't forget to like and subscribe.